scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you it's an information that i do not want us to be take lightly and to be careless over kingdom advancement although the mandate is global god's system of advancement is territorial everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial this for me is already a big deliverance for men of god because sometimes in a bid to take over the world are we together now we do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of god's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other god's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place it's not just building branches but being able to establish practically the life the character the nature of the kingdom across a territory so god's rating for a believer for a man of god for a church although your the scope of your mandate may be global but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time are we together now that means that if god has planted koinonia in zaria in this time and in this season no matter how effective our teachings the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth that is not going to be the parameter for God's rating. Primarily, he is going to judge us based on the efficiency. How we have taken advantage of his presence, the intelligence he has supplied, alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the Spirit. How we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory. So that's the first point I want you to understand tonight. That this king-priest dimension, the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of God's expectation as a portion to a territory it was Jesus that taught us in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 Matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what Jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what Jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of God is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now I told you that when God speaks to us we must learn the character of God's communication I've taught it here again and again in Koinonia that number one when God speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God I'm just digressing to help us understand God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two 
God's communications are prophetic. The relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it. The individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word. God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone. He sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel. God always speaks to nations in men. Are we learning now? So every time God speaks to you, sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you. And if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me for instance and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No, when God was speaking, he was speaking to you in me. Are we together now? It is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass. Now, if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings, you will end up in error. His rating for men is global prophetically, but experientially he deals with men territorially. Learn this. The church in Pagamos, the church in Smyrna, the church in Philadelphia, not the church in the world. When the Spirit of God began to speak in Revelations from where we would get some of these things, he says, right, the communication was to the whole world, but he broke it down to several churches. He would come to this church and commend them. I have weighed you. I have seen what you have done across that territory. A and B and C is what you have done in alignment to my purposes. D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice. Correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos. The church in Philadelphia. The church in Smyrna. The church in um, you know, Ephesus. And so on and so forth. Kingdom advance is territorial. It is true that we are the light of the world. It is true that we are a city that is set on a hill. But then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories. When God wants to promote men, he promotes men by supplying three things. Number one, a greater dimension of illumination. I'm, I'm touching on many things now. The first way God promotes men is by opening them to deeper access, understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom. The moment the portals of the heavens, the portals of revelation are open to you, higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory Are we together? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Very popular scripture. Jesus was teaching. Having resurrected, he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave. And then they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he replied by saying, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his care. Then verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. Listen carefully. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of God, witnesses, witnesses unto me. Then he begins to apportion territories. He would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world, full stop. But now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving. And they would be the ones to start. And he's telling them, look, 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 look. The goal is the utmost part of the earth. But it will be broken into territories. First, Jerusalem. 
then Judea, then Samaria, and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth. The first crusade that happened after Christ resurrected, the Bible says that something happened on the day of Pentecost. Now Peter was preaching. And when Peter began to preach in chapter 2 of Acts, the Bible says that the men were caught to the heart. Listen carefully. And then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. This is the part I'm going to. He said, for this promise is for you. Are you saying now? For your children. Oh dear. Look at this little boy. For you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said i shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the Lord will call God's dealings is territorial that means a true believers assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres both in the spirit and physically our obsession for more our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful write this down our mandate as matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories. Our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence, the power, the system the glory of God in that territory if we fail to carry this out then we have failed woefully listen again that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers not just to be prosperous that's important not just to build churches and ministries but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us that means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria listen carefully there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos in Kogi state and those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western Church they they, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a god that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of god within that dispensation to walk with the holy spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot host certain dimensions of Him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. 
but I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory if we fail to do that we have missed a lot if you're understanding me say amen one of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation it is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, 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 more, is more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories. We must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ. And everybody believes he is right. But our results are showing that there is inefficiency. There is inefficiency somewhere. There are activities going on. There are programs going on. Conferences going on. And nothing is wrong with those things in themselves. Except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated. And that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance. It is God's desire, John chapter um, 15 now, and verse 8, that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides. Meaning your fruit can be lost. Are we together? We have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, i'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader haven't been around the things of god for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do say well i don't know what to do with this person what is step b after giving your life to christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this i truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of god 
that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of god ignorance of the methodology of god we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirit to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of god the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what i'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart i have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know god many believers do not know the holy spirit many believers do not know the voice of the holy spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of god many believers go to church i agree many believers take communion i agree many believers join in general church prayer i agree but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation i'm not talking of men of god i'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noise makers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill i think it's philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining nor arguing i'm sure i'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um okay for god it that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no we, we have to we have been downgraded to a realm of scientology and carnality there must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preserve us of the ordinances of god 
in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you I will reverence you I will reverence you Lord for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you Lord when John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos John began to explain to us what he saw and among many other things John said he had a voice and when he turned to see that voice he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger. But the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. Hallelujah. I'm seeing fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit volcano in the spirit she goes like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman come for somebody this man is Still seeing this fire inside outside I'm seeing it it's like a volcano when when you see God doing these kinds of things it's, it's not show it's not show he's bringing witness he's bringing witness to the spirit of man because the Word of God must have an agency for performance he's, he's working on people I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding then the fire is dropping on people this is what I see in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabregade balakota varianda kosi brada. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. 
the death of a man of God should not end the move of God there are many men of God we talk about them they left with the secrets because there were no men to receive they left with the secrets Elisha died till today there are dimensions that would have been seen Gehazi was not positioned to receive God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood. But produce an effect that is strangely supernatural. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with spiritual power. Men follow pathways. It's an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of god's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust god to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves god does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of god around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities a portion for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies Kai, we have lost something serious we must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out every 
everybody is a general overseer everybody is a president everybody is an apostle everybody is a prophet everybody is a pastor hilarious ordinations happening left right and center and everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach i say this out of love for the body but we must return we are losing something we are losing something very powerful we are losing something the ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of an, an education is that the average believer studies the bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt the personal guilt that comes from messages every sunday that you must be spiritual it is not a personal appetite it's not a search if if that guilt were taken away from us we would throw the bible in a heartbeat that's why we love using any other thing job or whatever it's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory Our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory. Like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another i promise you i promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30 because at the, at the way we are going we are going to waste too much time and I sought for a man among them now this was God angry with a territory that's why what I wanted us to read but because of time we'll just look at 30 
God was angry with the territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. For what? For the land, not for the church. I'm talking about taking over territories, preserving the precepts of God over a territory. A man that will stand for the land. So there are men that can stand for the land, not just their churches. That because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. That I should not destroy it, but I found did he say I did not find human beings? There were human beings, many, but I found none. That man built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer. Let me tell you this. Believe me, hear me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, everywhere, here in any nation, but more specifically in Zaria. If we stop praying in Zaria, because of some kind of spiritual laziness, you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city. Are we together? The ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation. I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician. The ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers. The powers that mold the mindsets of people. The powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation. That you come into a city and find accidents anyhow. All kinds of things anyhow. And you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory. And part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy. That you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers. That's what men did in the Bible. Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we together? Preserve the family of Lot. The wife chose the way she wanted. Joseph stood in. Preserve certain things. Daniel stood in. Preserve. Are you not men who preserve the purposes of God? Their generation. The ministry of warfare and prayer. The ministry of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6. When we read from verse 10 to 19. The Bible tells us. Listen carefully. The Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then it says we should put the full armor of God. Are we together? Then it says how that we, we do not war against principalities and powers. But against um, rulers and flesh and blood. But principalities and powers and all of that. It begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist. Hold on. Let me preach to educated people. You know, sometimes because we have gone to school, because we are rich, small money, small job, we, and sometimes innocently and truthfully, I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well. Let me tell you something. Satan is many things. A fool is not one of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is defeated. Satan is old. Satan is several things. But a fool is not one of them. He has the advantage of age. Time. He has studied mankind. Different species of people have lived upon this earth. He has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience. Satan has existed before several dispensations. Before Adam's dispensation. That brought us into the sea. Every territory has controlling powers. Every territory has controlling powers. 
if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said, if we stop praying, Or if we concentrate on childish, immature prayer. Lord, give me tea. Tomorrow again, oh God, I forgot to ask for bread yesterday. There is a place where you ask for your needs. But notice how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we reverence you. After reverencing him, the next thing is your agenda. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come upon a land, upon a territory. Listen. The concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying, some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere. Preserve us of the ordinances of God. Gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups. Now churches start as intentional, organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God. Are we together? That before a man of God starts ministry, he has sewn his clothes for one year. Are we together? The offering basket has been made. Tight envelope is, in, is, is intact. What is it? We, we better be careful. This joke that we keep joking with ourselves. Every correct ministry starts as saying, it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of God that are being used mightily by God today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when God called them they went back and cried and said God can you use somebody else God will say you are the person you can choose to say no but I'm not using any other person you are the one I will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't, he, he doesn't stop us because there's, whether we are in it or outside, it's, there's, it makes no difference to him. We are still equally ignorant. Prayer. That's how this ministry started. Prayer. Every day, fire on the altar. And I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes. And you say, let's, let's thank God. That's Bible study. Prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit. Only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things. Strengthen the understandings of the people. The fire continues. This is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity. Let me be honest with you. Many territories have a lot of repentance to do. Many families have a lot of repentance to do. The prayer lives of many people are under attack. When the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer, he tilts your prayer to become a selfish one. So you are praying for hours, but you are making minimal, minimal spiritual progress. I insist 
prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave Zaria for a three-week break and you are in Kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady started leading. when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Adam? Me too, I'm from Adam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, we don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of god for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for god first press into god have a testament a a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first 
most people who become mightily used by God never go there to marry they go there to seek God they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying God will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even God that will tell them my son look you have been serving me sincerely this this one that you are serving you need a helper I said God I can continue God it's me that I say you need a helper but now we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven a prayer request full of oh God won't I marry and God what have you done for me you have not done anything nobody has been saved as a result it's a scam to come to the house of God you are not contributing anything and the next thing you want to take and and usually is God's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the Lord Jesus Christ let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah I like this suit that this one is wearing I know father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth Shakata kata kata. Le kota kata kata. as it's moving to high dogo someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never. A is here asking. Those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started. When you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. But because we are a lot more organized now, it is very difficult. When people got, there were people who would get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit from day two, they start prophesying. And even with the prophesying, they are not going anywhere. Because there are still demons to get out of there. As they finish prophesying, they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn. But now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men anybody that dodges fire don't trust him don't trust him you must be refined as of gold our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek god say amen prayer i'm encouraging you i'm encouraging the church in zaria i'm encouraging the church everywhere there must be prayer units most ministries do it but many ministries what what they do is not really prayer unit it's just maybe home sales which is wonderful I, I, I don't have a problem with it do you know why we not do it as koinonia because you are an extension of the ministry the goal is not Joshua Selman in every home the goal is the kingdom the power the glory of God your house can become an altar your small area can become an altar two of you three of you can begin to pray it doesn't matter that god started with you it doesn't need to have a name the name is prayer seven to nine five to six in the morning nine to ten every day or two days in a week or three days in a week you do this and see what begins to happen let me tell you what begins to happen the moment you pray there will first be silence one month two months you will start seeing physical agitations the demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um 
you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir, I'm not becoming You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence, you know it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue. And then one day, let me tell you how God will announce that he has come to that territory. A spectacular move of God will happen. One day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fire. Can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact not titles if you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church lock it down and go and start praying alone yes sir yes sir don't invite anybody let them come and meet you praying and you are praying and god is watching you my beloved son no carpet no canopy no mic no suit no nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and god is saying i i am watching listen all this all this running around am i a prophet or am i apostle is nonsense it is the place of prayer and work. there is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with god knowing who he is even if god tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what i'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade but then it's eventually as he's building you you know that no this training is not an evangelist training ah, why is this unusual ah, there are people who think they are called in there are some of you here seated you are born prophets with the office of a prophet but you have not seen one vision because it's not about the vision keep praying just continue just continue you will argue with anybody and say, no, sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. 
the refiner's fire comes through that prayer when your heart is being purged are we together now flesh is being taken away one day you will begin to pray and all of a sudden you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me they are wrong they don't know it is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you you say you are a pastor who told you just because someone prophesied he saw in part and he said so he may be right but he may not be it no don't say just because you saw a ring you saw a hand you say i'm a prophet i'm a prophetess i'm an apostle no sir don't flatter yourself let the place of prayer incubate you when you come out fully the name that you are will be shown not just by titles results 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 will show who you are if you're a prophet don't tell us let the results show it show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer show us the acumen the ability to perceive realities that's what makes a prophet show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit don't come and talk jargons and waste our time show us the performance that comes based on the word of god show us the throne in heaven that backs that office don't say i'm an apostle show us the throne that backs you show us the keys of the territory that was given to you we go around bragging calling ourselves names flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo satos kabriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Sheketekete. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Oh, 
you Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. If you stay on your own, turn your room to a prayer altar. If you are married, turn your house to a prayer altar. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take it seriously. If you paid for the room, then everybody coming there must pray. If they can't pray, they should leave the room. Don't, don't tolerate nonsense from people to bring any antichrist atmosphere and come and destroy what God is. Your own destiny is at stake. I will not let another person infiltrate my environment. No, sir. If you are paying the bills, you make the rules. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, there are many pastors that need to repent because many pastors stop praying sins. Ministry is ongoing. I'm in ministry. I know how busy ministry can be. Let me tell you, you need to love God beyond money and beyond members and beyond power to remain prayerful as a man of God. No matter, you can be leading a prayer movement it's no guarantee that you pray yourself you can pray whenever you are with the people it's no guarantee many prayer many men of god that lead prayer groups i tell you their own prayer lives is dying i tell you this as a man of god because it is hard work for a man of god to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion. Look good. But it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are over conscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. prayer preserve prayer in every territory preserve it in your house preserve it in your life preserve it everywhere don't let it go no matter who laughs at you no matter how western those of you listening from other nations of the world restore prayers back to your homes restore prayer back to your churches whether you are in America whether you are in London it doesn't matter where restore prayer back prayer has equal value everywhere whether you are rich or poor your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life number two how are the ordinances of god advanced and preserved a regular convergence of believers within, within that territory the second way that the ordinances of God are not only 
transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what God is doing now don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today when a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that God anointed some he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory so what what happens here every week is the will of God a convergence of men and women are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd that there, there is a joke are the people chairs the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too uh, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple 
and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings the crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds God brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places God is doing mighty things this place is one of them the Bible says and the Lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow there are all kinds of opportunities for growth number three how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles Jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles Jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for status to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display 
Why do we need an open display of miracles within territories? It creates convictions. Not just in the heart of church members, in the heart of the community. Many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display. The day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say, God revealed to me that in, in five months, they are going to tar this road. And people laugh at you and say, stupid pastor, if you want cheap publicity, go on air. And all of a sudden, a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months. You don't need to tell them God has done it. The next time they see you, that convicting power, the day you now speak and say, I saw death in this community, they will not laugh at you again. They do not take our words serious. Do you know why? Bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God. Something that defies principalities and signs and wonders. Most of this open display is largely done in the south. That's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there. The, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings, the miracles that happen, you will see people sitting on the street, selling akara, selling pap, and watching people rise up from wheelchairs. Now, let me tell you, it does not matter how hardened you are. If you see a real miracle, you must go back and think about it. You can choose to argue, but the truth still remains the truth. What has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting? Those who have laughed at you and said, Koinonia, every time you must trust God for an open display. Everybody say an open display. That one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden, someone that is to go for surgery, maybe your loved ones, just because you stepped in there, while they are busy criticizing a man of God on TV, you look and say, Daddy, the Lord just said I should tell you that this cancer is gone. And he laughs, hey, young boys, I was with you. I was, I remember serving God in boys' brigade when I was growing up. While they are talking all that drama, there is instant miracle. And he touches his stomach. He will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say, no, no. What is happening? And within a short time, the Lord is glorified. Let me tell you what they will start calling you. Uh, where is prophetess? Pastor, evangelist, we're about to pray. Is God saying anything? That's a sign that God is working. God is working something powerful in this time. God is raising mighty men in our days. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till his church looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop. chapter 19 please quickly Acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is what a thousand words our noise is too much. We need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body, this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. Today, we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says, hey, what did you say is wrong with you, sir? Darkness is all over our house. So bring his handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it. We rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power, period. Obed Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house. 
in 90 days how many days 90 solid days it's true that i know that some miracles can take time but something should start working after some time are we together if i lay hands on you to be delivered and after two weeks you come back one month nothing has happened that means something is wrong not with you with me i should go back for a retreat and say lord these hands otherwise a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper as it's coming on your head you believe that nothing is happening keep these hands anointed oh god keep these hands anointed keep these hands anointed that's a good prayer to pray for yourself keep these hands anointed May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand he said god brought mighty miracles give it to us again please by the hands of paul what is happening through your hands nothing 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 you don't have to be in church what is happening through your hands what happens to my destiny if i shake you you claim that god lives in you brothers and sisters what has happened to your hands nothing oh let me agree with you and we hold people while we are praying their eyes are opening we are the only ones who close our eyes because they don't believe in us they know that that prayer is just nonsense in jesus name amen they say thank you sir and they go back and say sorry can i see this man of god because that's the real person they know who solve their problems i want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute and say lord put something upon this hand Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of Akabia. Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone, and with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves upon them which had an evil spirit you know the name of the lord saying we adjure you they thought it's just by by big manism or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we are reading to verse 20 and then 14 says and there were seven sons of one skiva a jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi! Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you, who are you? Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit, they are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you and all of the sudden the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry i don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army 
rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. It will break every chain. progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They will do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws. A man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere. When that man, if he's spiritual, if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done, are we together? It's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever, no. That's why we must grow. But as we grow, we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is their miracles? Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, And many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also use curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it, it was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them, wouldn't they have thrown it since? They saw something superior and powerful. And the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or 
somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and saying, I was sent to go and kill one Koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the before. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver. 20 popular scripture. So mightily green the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for Koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six, but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ and even the church in Zaria. Who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now? Everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry. Who are the people mentoring those in secondary school? Thank God for FCS. Thank God for um, um, CEM. Thank God for all of these people. But there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here, that by the time they are growing, they are not only receiving education alone. There must be an intentional mentorship of younger people. Most people, is the mistake of the American church, they left their children. So you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman, served God all her life, but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God. We must concentrate. Right now, most people from the ages of 17 downwards, all they are obsessed about is phones, Android devices, PS4. I don't have a problem with it. But their entire obsession, oh, what OS are you using? You hear that? That's all they think about. Oh, I'm using this PS4. There's this... They need fire. Oh, they need. They are not too young. They need serious fire. I'm not against that. It's the reality that comes with that age range. But we must be able to guide people. That's why I love it when you see our children come here for koinonia. I know that many of you say, ah, "Are they too young to understand?" Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that small boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things 
They may be too small to articulate it, but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. 2 Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts, and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. May God forbid that in Zaria during a church service we will have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny. May God forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know God. Listen, listen, listen. Our children must love God and they must love God genuinely. Somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God. I want you to beware. There is a secret indoctrination of a generation. Ages 5 to 15 must be preserved. Those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry, receive an anointing for it. It's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets. Let them cram the memory verses. That's how we started. Children now don't know any memory verse again. You ask them, John 3.16, they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense. Teach them. Don't say it's not useful. Let them know. When we were being raised, they taught godly songs. Now, in most schools, children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents. A little child is singing a song that even as an adult, you look at him and say, no, this should not be. There must be restoration of godliness. CEM, may God anoint you more and revive you more. Please. FCS, may God anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying I don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction not discussion you don't have to be hostile on children 
a little spank with two fingers one two and then tell them what they did that was wrong don't just leave them cry this is what you did mommy does not like it daddy does not like it for that reason one two jesus too does not like it In include jesus let them learn and know that it's not just you alone preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name my generation shall made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your firstborn can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of your head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. He's insulting you that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined the day I give birth to a child who insults me that that day I'm not going to concentrate on the child the spirit that could enter my roof through that child a child of maybe it's a child of two three years nine ten years no see Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though are about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray, they say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers including christian schools i don't know what is christian about the school if they don't pray you have a christian school and you openly said it's a christian school and at the beginning of the class they don't pray what what is what is the christian about it the teacher himself cannot pray you never see a fasting program organized in the school nobody cares while they are praying the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again wait and let koinonia start her schools oh yes oh yes let koinonia start her schools and you will see there's nothing like i'm busy who will supervise it it's a mandate don't do that i'm busy man of god and allow the devil kill your ministry sit down open your eyes and see what is happening this teacher's life is questionable He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards 
they laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountain Top University. But these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare, and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid, only to come and testify. Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I, love, I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, Apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around. Colleague mentality. Some of you, you are in secondary school. Or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school. Thank God for what God is doing with them. And all of a sudden, this pompous, arrogant attitude. You see everybody and what is there. You see vision, I see vision. You pray for the sick, I pray for the sick. It's why we never receive. We keep making mistakes that are avoidable. Mistakes. Now let me tell you. Mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing. Because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored. But they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing. And they taught them rubbish. They taught them pride. They taught them a pompous life. They taught them a theology of imbalance. It matters who you listen to. It matters who you open up your spirit to. But that spirit must be open. Brothers and sisters, our generation is at stake. In the next 10 or 20 years, many of the people we look at today will be gone. Is, is the truth. Do you believe that? Many of our fathers, they are already wrapping up. We insulted them. We said, ah! They came and they taught people, cover your head, don't cover your head. We insulted them. They taught people, die, 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 die. We insulted them. Now the button is being passed to us. Let's hear what our children will say about us. We insulted them. We refused to see what God was doing to them. And as young as we are, we kept running our mouth insulting them. They preserved the button. Some of them today, look at great men like Papa Idi Adebuye. People like Billy Graham still alive. These men serve God to the end. Let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency. That's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? I can't remember it. 
need I live my life for you when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will be nothing the jeep and the duplex only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time am I against prosperity no but if that's all you can give a generation if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in Mary clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've told me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone Listen, we're not going to be here forever No matter how you don't want to believe me Nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old. 200 years ago, none of us on earth today was on earth. Don't live your life foolishly. We owe our generation and our children a debt. I will never, except God takes my life, but it will not be when I'm alive. That I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth. If it means my life going for it, let it go. But the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation. This is ministry. If you are not ready for this, don't jump around and talk nonsense. A lady sent me a text today, passionately. She may be following, listening. And she said, Apostle, she's from my village. She said, Apostle, come to my village. Why have you not come? I said, don't worry. You think I won't come there? I'm coming. God is counting on you. Listen carefully. I'm rounding up. God is counting on you. I'm not a man of God. It doesn't matter. There are souls. If God planned that in Pastor Alpha's lifetime, you are supposed to save 100 million people. Do you know if you save 20 million people, the world will clap for you. But it's when you get to heaven, God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest. If God has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies, they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus, they will be saved. In the next two minutes, hold hands together. 
and let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, we pray the glory of God across Saria City, across Savo, across Pizet, across Shika. In the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses. Preserved in every church. Preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree it and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray. Stand on the gap on behalf of our land. We stand in the gap on behalf of our land. Down on our knees, we'll take a stand and pray for the sea for our land. We'll pray for the needs of our land. Listen to the second part. It says, The power of darkness release our land. We'll never prevail. We'll never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion. Those who will rise up and pray. Stand in the gap on behalf of our land. We stand in the gap on behalf of our land. Down on our knees, we take a stand and pray for the seed of our land. We'll pray for the needs of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. Shakatos Kaparia Kadaskalepa. Embre Ketos Segeta. The powers that keep men poor. The powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land. The powers that stop development. The powers. That stop advancement. The powers that destroy men of God. The powers that destroy churches. The powers that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus. We come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ grows, Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, 
everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church hallelujah I know our time is gone but can we pray for Nigeria we listen as God looks at the map he's looking for incense he has found it in other locations Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit let God not see different localities some villagers and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say Zaria where is your incense I like us to pray and say Nigeria is my business Nigeria is God's business peace to the walls peace to the borders Peace in the east, peace in the north, peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare. We manifest our priesthood. We are lampstands. We are lampstands. Priests unto God. We raise an incense of intercession over this nation. Nigeria is God's own nation. Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself. We command from border to border. The spirits of bloodshed we curse you. We curse you. We curse you. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, let's pray against the spirit of sentiment. Are we together? Whether Christian, whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone. And we must live together. Are we together? Whether, whether Ipo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness. People have lost lives. several parts in Africa and they want to come to Nigeria is listen if you understand this thing it's not about north south east or west it is the devil looking for your destiny and looking for your children I like you to pray and command peace to the walls of this nation every state mention the state by name we command peace peace in Plato State State. Peace in Lagos, peace in Kano, peace in Abuja, peace in Bauchi, peace in Kope, peace in Adamawa, peace in Katsina, peace in Chikawa, peace in Imo State, peace in Enugu, peace in Rima State. We declare and declare the six short political souls. And we're standing here only because you And we're standing here only because you made a way. Made a way. When I 
backs were against the wall And it looked the sick it was over You made a way Hallelujah. There are people here. Listen. Home and abroad, their entire families are earning 200,000. But every week, they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone. I heard of a woman, 70,000 naira every week. God is my witness. They spend on, is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that? And there is no guarantee the person, you see how the devil works until all your money finishes, then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble. How many of you right now, nobody to help you in your life? Lift your voice in one minute and cry. Cry for the help of God. Koinonia, pray, pray. Shabakato sebara baladaba. Zakata baroko to sopregeti. Shegete bereko sopra na baladaba baladaba. Don't know how, but you did it. Lord, I cry. Hear me, O oh God. My life must make progress. My life must make progress. Outside, are you praying? My life must make progress. My life must make progress. hallelujah 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 prayer point number two listen listen i want us to break out of cycles tonight are we together i'm going to minister to you but there are people here you are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life nobody rises beyond the level go to school or not it's a pattern you must break don't watch it happen and say it's all right nothing solves itself by itself you must engage it with faith lord this poverty thing i've seen it in my family we are not lazy people but i'm seeing it come this lack of being serious with god lift your voice and break every cycle lift your voice and command accept yourself accept yourself Accept yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day 
that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points before I begin to minister to us. Listen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. If Satan finds what belongs to him in you, he's authorized to destroy you. We are going to pray and we are going to say, Lord, whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny, I apply the blood. I invoke the mystery of the blood. Lift your voice and pray. Legal access. I apply the blood. Are you praying? I apply the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood on my children. I apply the blood. Pray on my husband, on my wife, on my business, on my ministry, on my job. I apply the blood. No divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail. standing keep standing everyone we are going to pray now i tell you i'm angry in my spirit luke 18 verse 1 please quickly luke 18 verse 1 and he spake a parable luke 18 verse 1 and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint verse 2 there's something I'm looking for saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man verse 3 and there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying avenge me of my adversary stop there God is a God of vengeance listen listen I know that's the nasty side of God but the God I serve is not only merciful God, there are people who don't need mercy they need vengeance you don't pray if you don't believe it but let me tell you something there is a God of vengeance he said let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered lift your voice and cry Lord avenge I cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness in my life my family Koinonia pray Arise Sokoto Pakaya Righteousness and justice At the foundations of his throne Oh God of vengeance Arise Oh God of vengeance Arise against the wicked Oh God of vengeance Arise Oh God of vengeance Arise against evildoers. Arise against them that seek to feed on the flesh of your people. Hallelujah. Listen. There was a man in the book of Esther called Haman. Have you heard about Haman? That man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God. Not just the Jews. The agenda of God. 
the apple of his eyes and then the bible says through a lot of activities when that plot was gotten the king sent and he said they should go and hang him he already built a gallow in advance in advance we live in a wicked world brothers and sisters let me tell you it's not all about vengeance but there is a dimension of it that is necessary if you must break through the wickedness of men is beyond imagination you are going to pray it again lord there are powers that have tied down my life and my family arise oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance hallelujah hallelujah listen listen i was told the story of a woman pastor jakes married a man that god had blessed and then the man died as soon as the man died strangers came from left right and center and told her you have no inheritance in this they stripped that woman to the last of everything banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no you rejoice in my pain the god of vengeance will arise for you i tell you only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it he said rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet i will rise again how many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends they lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check sign them off say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia i know many of us are young people but let me tell you when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility you will appreciate this prayer there are men who will kill you and bury you smiling they will kill you and bury you smiling when judas came to kiss jesus a kiss is a sign of love correct yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy this is the guy this is how you will kill him how many people kissed you into your suffering today They kissed you with a stupid advice and that's that's what has landed your life today they told you stop tithing these men of god are crooks they have destroyed your life are we together tonight i want us to engage the word to engage the word with your spirit if you insist brothers and sisters god will give you a breakthrough if you insist god will give you a breakthrough are we together now i want you to pray one last prayer and then i'll begin to minister by the spirit lord visit the root cause of my challenges i may not know what it is i only know the effect oh god go to the root it says every tree the axe is placed at the root every tree my father has not planted Lord, go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life. The root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands. The root cause. Are you praying? hallelujah hallelujah listen if after tonight's meeting you return with a testimony 
nobody will ask you to run to the house of God. You will go by yourself. Do you know how many, why many people never seek God? The truth is they are tired of lack of results. They are tired of it. Jumping around, doing all kinds of things. Yes, you don't love God just for results. But you've heard me say it again. At a point in your Christian experience, results must come as consolations to your serving God. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight. Let me make an altar call. Let's start with the altar call first. So that we'll finish right now. Please everyone standing, no moving around. Outside your attention. There are people right here. Everything we boast of is in Christ. If you are not in Christ, there is no guarantee. Please listen very carefully. If you are not in Christ, there is no guarantee whatsoever. Are we together now? So you are here. We are talking about witchcraft. You have joined us to pray congratulations. But nothing will happen to you until there is a translation. Because when a man is not in Christ, the Bible says he is in the kingdom of darkness. The very domain of darkness. Are we together now? So when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith, there is a spiritual transfer. It is only on that basis you can challenge darkness. There are two categories of people very quickly. I'm going to make the altar call quickly. When you come, Pastor Jakes will lead you in prayer. And then we'll take over and fly tonight. And trust God to take us to a realm where we will never return. Never return to this level. In the name of Jesus. You are here and you are saying, man of God, it's as if you are just prophesying to me. You are right. It's you I'm speaking to. And I'm going to make an altar call. One, maybe two, three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can can god give me a new beginning absolutely no one has made it in my family you will be the first if and only you receive him it says as many as believed in him even to them that i mean as many as received him even to them that believed in him he gave them power to become power to become you do not have the power but you have the will and you can choose right now i'm going to make an altar call whether you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time or you want to rededicate your life man of god i gave my life to christ but somehow things have gone haywire no problem you are welcome if you are outside run like there's fire on the mountain any of the overflows you are inside here you run out i will count one to five very quickly one run like there's fire on the mountain if you are thinking about it go back to your seat Give Jesus praise. Please clear the way for them. There are people running outside. Let Jesus Christ step into your destiny. Koinonia, can you motivate them? Appreciate them as they come. Don't let any friend tell you why you're disgracing yourself. Shame the devil over your life tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. Just make that step of faith and come quickly run to Jesus run to Jesus keep coming keep coming there are still more people there are still more people if you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you leave him alone and come run to Jesus Every one of us in front, can you just lift up your hands? Lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender. Are you following? Please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Jesus loves you. I want you to understand that. Just say, dear Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. I want to hear you speak. Say, dear Lord Jesus. I come before you. I ask for forgiveness for my sins. I believe in the power of your blood. 
I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as their hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just the moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please, let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister a sister or so, someone inside and someone in the overflow outside. The power of God is going to come on that person now. God is bringing a strange deliverance. I'm seeing a strange deliverance. Bring the person one inside, one outside. I just want to speak to them. Please quickly, we have a lot to do tonight and we want to conserve time. Shabra to Karabara Banana, Shabra to Gapra, so that you give a lot of Shake that to separate the ship. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. Free now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. I'm going to pray for you. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Listen, what is deliverance? Deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor. Deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm already seeing in the spirit. Mighty. Especially today, God is visiting visitors. If you are here for the first time, God is visiting visit us in a very strange way. Lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted. Please bring them. Just keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. God is touching people. It's a foolish instruction, but it's what the Lord is telling me. Just keep your hands lifted. Like fire. It's coming on people inside and outside. Bring them out. God is visiting visitors. 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 Doesn't mean other people are not being touched. But particularly visitors.
Father, spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. There are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives, their destinies in the name that is above all names. Whoever under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life, as we shout that name Jesus, there will be an eruption of fire in this place. And all of a sudden, God will begin ministering to people. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three. Second, third, 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 third. They must pass from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit. I command every devil, strange spirits, tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. Mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. The power of witchcraft being broken. Being broken. Broken. God is addressing issues of oppression. Oppression. Shakataya. It must end now. It must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, Shakatabakata under the yoke of setbacks whether you are a visitor whether you've been here for a long time in the name of Jesus I command that spirit to leave you now I command that spirit to leave you now the power of God is touching people delay, delay, delay spirit I curse you by the God of heaven delaying destiny delaying achievement I curse that spirit I curse that spirit I curse that spirit bring the mommy out there's a mighty deliverance happening to her delay over your family broken 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 by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is giving me a strange instruction please sisters lay your hands on your womb lay your hands on your stomach something remarkable is going to happen here right now there is a kind of deliverance God is doing I don't know what I'm even doing but Lord I pray right now this is not for everybody but I am seeing the Lord is instructing that they lay their hands 
and I'm going to pray a prayer for you you'll be surprised every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of Jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now one two three release them now 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 Johnson Johnson I'm hearing a name Johnson 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 we are still praying please Johnson my God I tell you I see this fire falling on sisters I don't know what it is with ladies God is God is ministering a serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully i'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are i'm prophesying now and i'm praying for you the power of god is looking for those people the power of god is looking for those people you rise to a level and fall you rise to a level and fall lord in the name of jesus inside and outside wherever you are i release that fire like a messenger to your life like a messenger to your life i cast that witchcraft now i cast that witchcraft now hallelujah the lord is showing me a vision my god hold on i'm seeing deliverance for children like little children the power of god is coming on small children in this place i'm seeing children being delivered some initiated into occultism some initiated into this let's just walk the way god is father in the name of jesus i speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation wherever they are don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting now wherever they are inside and outside i'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage i set them free now i set them free now hallelujah hallelujah my friend lift your hands that gentleman going tap him there is hardship in your family and the Lord is asking me to cause it right now in the name of Jesus I cause hardship let the anointing of the spirit come on you now I cause that spirit the spirit of hardship I cause you now I cause you now I cause you now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah listen if you are here and you have any blood disease 
just blood disease any kind any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest i want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please i want to pray for you right now the lord is giving me that instruction very quickly i want to pray for you i'm seeing a lady who is as god is about to change her genotype now 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 a dramatic change of genotype from as to ss from as to aa by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah please if you come from a family where no one in your family is working lift your hands nobody no job nobody just please just do what i'm asking you to do let's save time just lift your hands nobody at all is working no matter what happens just lift your hands i want to pray for you lift your hands i want to pray for you jesus 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 i'm i'm looking at hands lifted and and for some of the hands i'm seeing like a rope this is not necessarily you this is a representation of your family and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus i stretch my hands get ready for the power of god right now wherever you are even those who didn't lift their hands i decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now right now right now right now right now i release them i release them i release their jobs i release their jobs by the power of the holy ghost 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 we end joblessness here right now right now in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah the spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people one seven one seven one seven at the count of four this is the instruction god gives me unusual access to illumination lord where are they inside and outside one two three strange illumination four take it now take it now the spirit of revelation on common access to the secrets of the kingdom on common access 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 i release it in the spirit access 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 hallelujah please make sure you receive every word that is coming every word come god is going to use you come come and stand here lift your hands stand up in the name of jesus i don't know you huh but an anointing will come upon your life today and god is going to change your life like day and night receive that grace right now strange grace step into that dimension that dimension there are impartations going on now let's just receive the impartations impartations not healings not healings impartations impartations i release the gifts of the spirit right now right now i release the gifts of the spirit lord stir up the fountain stir up the waters stir up the waters i release the gifts of the spirit strange gifts strange gifts strange manifestations of power of power healing anointings healing anointings i activate healing anointings right now healing anointings step into it step into it outside inside step into it god is releasing mantles 
mantles of healing ancient mantles of healing ancient mantles grace for barrenness grace for barrenness grace for barrenness healing barren cases hallelujah hold on I'm still praying I'm still praying God wants to release the healing anointing let's just stay here with this healing thing God wants to release there are many more people I'm not seeing them receive it yet father you want to release this grace there is such a grace as the healing anointing I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado may the power of God come on you now everyone everyone everywhere men women take it take it take it fire upon your spirit hello Adonai thy kingdom come I will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. Elohim Adonai, I don't know how we are going to manage this now ushers there is a prophecy for you the lord says i should tell you from now as you hold people and as you shake them there will be a transference on every one usher i'm prophesying now that's why i say i don't know what we'll do ushers ushers receive that mantle receive that mantle a strange healing grace coming on our ushers supernatural supernatural the unction take it take it where you are let that fire come upon you upon ushers in a strange way upon ushers in a strange way the grace for the miraculous no longer will you just hold people no longer will you just welcome people as you clean the seats you release strange mantles. Hallelujah. We'll soon pray for the sick. But please, everyone, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want to pray. I'm seeing people here. The anointing for business and entrepreneurship. Just keep your hands. That's why, please, keep your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't say I'm not calling to a businessman. That's none of your business. Just listen to what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. It's a grace. It's a grace. I believe maybe in the course of the service, we'll call a Jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly, truly upon your life. Lift your hands. Brothers and sisters, there is a grace for the marketplace. You don't go there through desire. It's not that you are a, mon a money monger, you just go, but strange ideas strange insight do you know i'm seeing a number four and one 41 this will affect many people inside and outside whether you are a businessman or not it's not what i'm asking you that grace will locate you where you are a grace for the marketplace lord in the name of jesus inside and outside all the overflows online anyone here who must step into that grace whether you know anything about the marketplace or not take that grace now take that grace now i release it supernatural access 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 to business strategies access to ideas take it right now Receive it, receive it. It's coming on people. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, it's coming on you. So that you will go and prosper. 
so that you will go and prosper 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 there is a woman one of our mothers this grace that i'm talking about is coming on you now now one of our mothers one of our mothers is receiving that grace God is releasing that grace whether you are inside or outside whoever it is I release that grace now there is a woman I'm seeing in the spirit you must take that grace now you must take that grace now uncommon ability uncommon ability uncommon insight for the works of your hands to begin to produce fruits hallelujah hallelujah listen look at me please help them how many of you are trusting God to restore something that has left your life it can be anything how many of you are trusting God I want to release that grace now and I want you to believe it some of you had destiny help us but something happened and they left your life some of you had quality relationships but it left your life some of you had finances but it left your life some of you even had certain levels of graces the lord is asking me to prophesy restoration Kai, this is going to land on people's head i'm saying this thing there are physical gifts you used to see in your life not gifts of the spirit not just gifts of the spirit gifts gift endowment for some reason it disappeared some of you are actually worshippers singers but that grace left is coming back is coming back i invoke the grace that he has put upon my life i prophesy strange restoration i call it by name and i command it back to your life i call it by name everything you once were that you now are not i command you to become it now i command you to become it now i release that grace i release that grace receive it i release that grace i release that grace hallelujah now listen listen there are some of us hear me you have been doing certain things but the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life this is a very serious prayer i want to pray for you you have been doing business with the brain of a money monger but not the grace for the marketplace you have been singing only with the voice of a musician but not the spirit of david i want to release the anointing of your office the anointing that has to do with your function please i want you to believe what i'm praying hear me hear me hear me it's one thing david was anointed to step into his office are you anointed for what you are doing i know you are working you want promotion is there an unction you are working with or are you just working with certificate at the count of three i want you to shout jesus there will be distribution of graces it's like an alignment the anointing the oil of your call the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you father in the name of jesus i pray right now whoever is functioning without an anointing functioning without the oil i stand upon this ground and i prophesy at the count of three may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you get ready now one one two two three receive that grace now take it take it grace grace for your academics grace for the ministry grace Turns things around 
Help me. But change the cause. God help me by. Oh, say, oh, say, You're the God of awesome wonders. I taste it on your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please. I'm seeing something happening here right now. There are people who are receiving grace for speed. And they will start running physically. Hold them. Hold them so they don't injure people. I release the grace. You won't control yourself. Physically. Running. Speed. Physically. I release that grace now. Receive grace for speed. Receive grace for speed. Right now, right now, I command you to run, run in the spirit, catch up, catch up, catch up by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I release speed, I release speed, I release speed, speed to your life, speed to your destiny, speed to your life, speed to your destiny. Your life speak to your destiny the words you speak come things around your arms like run like Elijah you took away the chain Much more than I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen. Please. Three things. Let me just give three instructions. Hold on please everyone. The worship team will continue right now. Now we are going to be very fast about this number one. Number two. Please. If you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones please i permit you put on your phone and call them tell them to send it as a text message write it we are going to be praying here tonight and we are going to be asking the fire of god to fall on request don't assume if you have not written it no problem settle down think well and write you are here you are trusting god for healing i understand there are a few sick people that they brought around please we are going to do it this way if your case is very sensitive then you can bring them to the front here but those outside please just walk to the um well there are a lot more people outside really well for those who can come in let's see but for those who may not make it you can walk to the front and then down there i'm here pastor jakes is here um we'll just station ourselves one one and then the other people will just support so that we can do it very fast praise god thank god pastor jakes is here and jimmy is here hallelujah praise god hold on so outside you can just walk at your various projector stands and stand there for those who have come in just allow them don't stop them let them come in that does not mean everybody will stream in please are we together if you're standing just stand trust god if they don't ask you what is wrong with you don't worry they just lay hands on you praise the lord Ejimi, please you help us Ejimi will be outside here and Pastor Jakes will be down outside there. Praise the Lord. Benga, you go with Pastor Jakes. You will help Pastor Jakes outside. Um, 
Pastor Alpha, you'll be outside, just help them. And then, um, who, who is around again? Is Femi around? Okay, so you can just come and help me here. So let's do it that way, very fast. Very, very fast. If there are more people, there are still promises here. Michael is here. So maybe you can add one. Okay, promise, just follow. Promise, follow Pastor Jakes. Michael, follow hey, Jimmy. Please, let's do it very, very fast. While, hold on, please. Don't be distracted. Don't cut the flow. We are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray. And then I'll speak over your life. Many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated. Don't be distracted. I expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. For those stationed at different points, whether at the back, any of the overflows, I'd like you to believe God for a miracle right now. Believe God for a miracle. You can see someone like our daddy. He has come with his crutch, believing God to walk. You believe you walk, sir? You believe the Lord will heal you? So get ready to walk. You see, there are people stationed around. We are going to pray. This will be very, very fast. And then the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Let me start with our daddy first. How long have you been like this, sir? Six months. Stroke? Who brought him? Who came with our daddy? You came by yourself, sir? came by myself. By yourself? From where, sir? First station here. Yeah. You cannot walk. I can move with you. This walk is stick. Which but of the legs has a problem? This is the leg. This is stroke. Yes. Can you lift it? No, I can't. I can't. The hand, I can't lift Hold it. on. Look at this. Sir, look at me. You believe in Jesus? I believe. You believe in the power of I Jesus? Believe. Lord, I introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? The Lord will begin to touch you. Your hands, everything is already dead. Sir, lift your leg. Lift your leg. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your leg. Just lift it. Lift your leg. Lift your leg. Start, try to walk gently. Come. Come. Try to walk gently. Come. Give me the stick. Look at me. Look at your stick. Come. Come. Don't be afraid. Come. Lift your leg. Look at this. Look at what is happening to this man. Came with this stick. Look at this. 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 Find a chair and just keep him, let him sit down while the power of God touches him. Sir, you came here by yourself. Um, trust him. Okay, and the boy has gone. Okay, he's somewhere. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God you believe has begun this miracle. You will perfect it. Look for a stick for him there. Hold your stick by yourself and go. Don't put it on the ground. Hold it up. Walk by yourself and go. Give Jesus praise. Look at what God is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is still sick here. Someone is still sick here. I'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out from me. Someone is still sick here. No, 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 no. I'll pray for you. But I'm saying, I feel it within this vicinity from ministers roll down, choir. Someone is sick. Come, let me pray for you. you came out. Lift your hands. Jesus. Someone is 
Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother. Supernatural miracle. It's coming to that person by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are holding her, but something is leaving her to you now. You who is holding her, something is leaving her to you. There is there is virtue. I see a transference of grace from a Jimmy's wife to you. You are doing your work as an usher, but you have received something very strange and very powerful. You see, let me tell you something. If, if you do not, you see, hold on. Walking in the anointing is more than having it. Having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing. If not, you will be anointed, but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing it's like a man shooting anyhow you must have discernment many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who are being touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and matter two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing it's a strange hallelujah god god is giving two of them strange favor strange favor i see strange favor strange favor america god is giving you access i'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head and God is saying he's giving you strange access strange access strange access strange access strange access Muas God is giving strange favor strange favor strange favor hallelujah I don't know what I'm saying, but this is a word for someone. And the Lord is saying, why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? Why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? This is the word of the Lord. Why make it next year? This is a word for many people when I've destined it to be this year. As I speak to you, the word is for you. The power of God will locate you. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year, it's the year of triumph. It's the year of triumph. Why make it next year? Just allow me to do my stupidity. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year. 
why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year my God hallelujah there is a lady here you have been disappointed with God right now you actually came help the ushers you came expecting that I would directly call your case and you, you, you prayed this thing but now it looks like we're about to pray and I didn't call your case the power of God is coming on you now now as a sign that God had now wherever you are he's locating you now now I command that spirit to leave you. I see you in the spirit. Go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands now and I command. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Peace to your spirit. Every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still playing outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a listen. There are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations. God, see, let me tell you right now, if the anointing comes on you. Just know that is the answer to your prayer. This is not a special once the anointing comes on you. Just know that your prayer has been answered. You understand? This is what it doesn't mean if the anointing, if you don't fall down, it's not answered. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this is how God is choosing to confirm to some people now, as I'm talking, that your prayer, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how difficult your prayer is. Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What do you mean? Please, okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, leave her. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to to get her. Rakata kata bakata. So poto so peke te te te. Miracle so God. Testimony so God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, signs and wonders, signs and wonders. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. Visit impossible situations. I tell you, God is moving. I see a cloud. I see a cloud over this prayer request. That's what I see in the spirit. God is moving upon it. Moving upon it. Moving upon it. The Spirit of God is moving over the prayer request, visiting families, releasing angels, releasing angels, visiting the request. I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence, visiting the prayer request. Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, all for a salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing it one more time for God. Come on, yeah, Kata. 
Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the Universe. E tabari kate sakata ya the god that answers by fire E pari sata we receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus Angels of God are you not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation we receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven now in the name of Jesus the heavens over these requests are open and answers come speedily in the name of Jesus it has been decreed it has been ratified and it is done in the name of Jesus Lord we say thank you Lord we say thank you we say thank you exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask above all that we imagine is done in the name of jesus we give you praise father we thank you we thank you we thank you in jesus name we have decreed come on give jesus praise give jesus mighty praise hallelujah please said you may still come pastor jakes come I just feel like doing this is I, I don't always do this but I want to prophesy over your lives and in the name of Jesus they are my friends but the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives they are great men of God in power but in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension to prophesy a new level and in the name of Jesus I speak it step into a new dimension a Jimmy God is saying I should release grace for access I command that grace strange access strange access by the power of the Holy Ghost strange access gifted men coming into your life connections with gifted men in the name of Jesus and Pastor Jake's God is giving you influence strange influence strange influence strange influence strange influence is a very strange apostolic dimension of influence lord i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless them wherever your wives are i bring them into this experience now 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 wherever they are i prophesy to tosin wherever she is and i speak to hope you are one so i prophesy as it happens to you I bring your wives into this experience in the name of Jesus strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once I spotted Lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from Abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the Lord is saying I should prophesy a release I told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the Lord is saying I should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka dodo barekete zat kaskapas katapas katapas Legate to soto pretekes kobaria da balaraba. A new chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter. And as many who desire to drink of this grace, a new chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter. As many who desire to drink of this grace, a new chapter.
chapter in the name of Jesus a new chapter listen I prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. We're rounding up. Who is this girl? Come. You. God has chosen to visit you. Come. Come and stand here. God is wiping your tears. This prayer I'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny. I lay my hands upon you and I command the gates to be opened now. I stood there and I saw you and the Lord said I should open that gate. I lay my hands upon you. I command the gates to be open. Be open right now. Be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be open right now. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. Please, this lady with uh, yellow, blue, you come. I don't know you but the Lord is asking me to pray for you lift your hands this is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I command uh -uh. I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open. And I saw a name come out. Listen. I saw a name come out. And I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting your people. All three of you. Step into that grace. I open that door now. The Okalo family. Step into that grace. Open, 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 open. I open that door. An age-long witchcraft broken over your family. An age-long witchcraft broken over your family. An age-long witchcraft broken over your family. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down. Whatever has covered your glory, I speak it right now in the name of Jesus let it be open 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 I unveil your glory I unveil your glory I unveil your glory Shaka -ta -ta -ta. I unveil your glory I unveil your glory tonight is a strange night Please receive every prophetic word that I'm going to pray for you. Ah, just allow me to do one more thing. Ah, the Spirit of God, I have not seen this in a while. I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria and I see Benway State. The Spirit of God is going to Benway right now. Right now, touching people. You know how it happens when I speak. Benway, Benway, miracles. Locate them now, oh God. People from Benway. Benway, strange grace. Strange grace. I break witchcraft. Benway. I'm seeing Benway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm seeing, I know O to go, but I'm seeing the O, A. A at the, is there a place like that? or to buy or something the power of god i'm seeing that going to that area the lord is bringing a miracle ends with an a whoever comes from that region in the name of jesus breakthrough 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 strange breakthrough
strange breakthrough. Benway, Benway, Benway. I don't know why God is doing this, but I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo, Emo, Emo. Where are they, oh God? Emo, 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now strangely. Matato Sotota. Emo state. Miracles. Miracles. Breakthroughs. Signs. Wonders. Miracles. Miracles. To Emo state. By the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar, something is happening right now. Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, help her, help her, please. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone. It's the Minister of Signs and Wonders. Let me talk to you, my dear. This lady looking at me. You, come. The Lord has located you today. Come. Lift your hands. The Lord says, I should tell you, for shame, he's bringing laughter to your life. For shame, he's bringing laughter to your life. For shame. He's bringing laughter to your life. For shame, he's bringing laughter to your life. Lift your hands. We are rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening, you don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations i want to pray for you please receive everything i pray for you every age-long challenge every challenge that has refused to leave i prophesy upon it right now i command that it comes to an end in your life now 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 that fair lady come this lady time run come lift your hands i'm still praying in the name of jesus listen whatever has brought shame and dishonor like a stigma to your life i roll it away right now in the name of jesus I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. I saw you inside a cave and I'm surprised because we've prayed for, for deliverance prayer. And I saw you inside a cave. You are just trying to push the door. That's why I asked you to come out. Let me. I don't know you. Do I know you? Where did you come from? Damagadi. Where? Damagadi to Kutuku. Where is that? Here in Zaria. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough. Two things. God is going to throw somebody out of your life. Yeah. I'm not a prophet yeah. of doom, but it will happen. Yeah. He will reach three days. Yeah. Huh? Throw yeah. completely so that you can move forward. Yeah. I hold your hands. In the name of Jesus, every deceiver of your destiny will drive them far from you right now. In the name of Jesus. You need to love Jesus with all your heart, right? You are a nice person, but your relationship with Jesus, you, you can get teachings after this, but I want to prophesy on your life. God is taking somebody, not dead though, just driving somebody out, an unwanted person out of your life. I prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen. I lay my hands on you and I provoke the heavens to release that favor for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over every family represented here. Whether your nuclear family 
your extended family hold on i don't know what has gone wrong but in the name of jesus within now and miracle service match dramatic turn around for families dramatic turn around for families dramatic turn around for families in the name of jesus one of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers i want to pray for you i don't know where they are but one thing i know is they never come on their own they are called by prophecy i prophesy to the north i prophesy to the south i prophesy to the east i prophesy to the west the helper of your destiny i command them to appear now 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 hallelujah come come and hold my hands congratulations i'm seeing a job this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing a very good job and the lord is saying i should congratulate you look at me you will stand here and testify before the people of all the holy ghost said i should tell you is congratulations and i hold your hand in the name of jesus christ may it come to pass i decree and declare the results you have not had in 10 years put together in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god in one month 30 days i stand here under the unction of the holy ghost 30 days beginning from today step into those results step into those results ah, yeah, 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 yeah. step into those results step into those results strange dimensions of results hallelujah whoever has despised you whether to your knowing or not to your knowing i pray may god put them on the scene as he lifts you may they watch your rising as god honors you i pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down prayer life down your praise and worship life down fasting down word life down in the name of jesus christ i activate fresh grace receive it fresh grace fresh fire outside receive it fresh grace fresh fire fresh grace hallelujah wherever your prosperity is i pray may listen listen hagar carried ishmael and they were roaming around a the desert they said there was no water but when an angel appeared all of a sudden they saw water that you have not seen it does not mean it's, there, it's not there i open your eyes to see where god has anointed to bring you financial blessings i open your eyes in the name of jesus i open your eyes to see where god has placed your prosperity hallelujah the plague of death that is looming around this nation looking for people and families is listen it's like a graph it rises then sometimes it relaxes i'm praying whoever calls your name i'm prophesying this oh whether in the secret or the open to invoke death upon your life i command the earth to open and swallow them I command the earth to open and swallow them. Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. The Esther anointing, the unction and the grace that granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus Shababa Satalakata in the name of the Lord Jesus 
I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now. Take it. I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we are done. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection. Listen. I want to pray something that is very powerful in your life. Listen. When you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you, it's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says, defend you in the day of trouble. There are many of us, if for any reason things go wrong in your life, you are in trouble. There is nobody that can arise as a defense. But I'm prophesying to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors, I call them forth right now. In the name of Jesus, may God raise men to be a wall of defense for you. In this wicked, um, wicked state that we are living right now in this country, people say if you don't have anybody, and honestly speaking, somebody can get up and come and seize your land. You and your land and your paper, they will collect it because there is no defense. I'm prophesying again. Quarter to shame. May God raise a defense for you. And finally, I want to pray the prayer of Jabez for you. Many of us, ha, many of us have not studied. Honor is not money. Listen, listen. There are many rich people with no honor. Are we together? There are many well-to-do people with no honor. Do you know what honor is? Honor is when God anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation. So for every one person who talks nonsense, there are thousands. Honor. Jabez said, oh, the, the mother bore him in sorrow. You brought shame for me. So I call you Jabez. Honor is more than money, brothers and sisters. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. I pray the mantle of honor that by the grace of God has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all names for as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive take that man to right now take that man to right now they don't have to know you but strangers will come to feed your flock receive that grace for honor hallelujah Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We lift our hands to the great I am. Oh, was and we. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.